Now speaking about the complications of thyroidectomy, we can classify the complications into immediate and delayed. About the immediate complications, the most important is respiratory affection. The problem of thyroidectomy, the main problem of my patient who is uh, undergoing thyroidectomy is his breath. So the respiratory complications are the most dramatic complications. The first one is stridor and stridor is a very bad complication after thyroidectomy. What are the causes of stridor? Number one, number one, bilateral abductor paralysis of the vocal cord. If there is partial injury, which is bilateral to the recurrent laryngeal nerve, and we explained this in the chapter of anatomy before. Number two, the second cause of stridor may be temporary laryngeal edema because of irritation by the endotracheal intubation. It is temporary, it is relieved by corticosteroids, so the anesthetist observe during indirect laryngoscope, observe the edema, and this improves with corticosteroids, unlike the bilateral abductor paralysis, which is evident by the indirect laryngoscope, and the treatment is tracheostomy. The third cause of stridor is what we call tracheomalacia. Tracheomalacia is resorption of the tracheal cartilage with cases of huge long-standing goiter. It causes resorption of the tracheal cartilage and after removal of this huge goiter, the trachea collapse and the treatment is just tracheostomy. So there is three causes of stridor. Number one, vocal cord abductor paralysis bilaterally. Number two, temporary by laryngeal edema due to manipulation. The third one is tracheomalacia and the main treatment is tracheostomy. Sometimes tracheostomy is life-saving and it may be uh, removed later on when the uh, cord paralysis improves, whatever the cause, it may be temporary tracheostomy. Then if the patient comes well and get recovered well and go to the ward and then we observe suffocation. Suffocation may be due to hematoma and the treatment of this hematoma causing suffocation, there is a swelling of the wound. Don't wait for going to the theater, just open on the bed. We open the wound and evacuate the hematoma on bed. Don't go to the theater. So sometimes hematoma due to bleeding, which is primary hemorrhage or reactionary hemorrhage causes suffocation. And I can see the swollen neck just open at the bed, on the bed. Sometimes tetany may occur due to injury of the parathyroid, maybe direct injury, maybe removal of the parathyroid, maybe ischemic injury if you ligate the vascular supply bilaterally. So tetany may cause respiratory affection also. And the last cause of respiratory affection after stridor, suffocation, tetany is the surgical emphysema. If there is injury of the trachea, there may be leak, air leak, air leak into the wound, compressing the trachea and may cause some sort of suffocation. So these are the main causes of respiratory affection rather than chest infection and so on. So they are the causes of respiratory affection and it is the most problematic in our work. The second important complication of thyroidectomy is thyroid crisis. Thyroid crisis occurs in unprepared toxic patient. If you operate or if you do thyroidectomy for unprepared toxic patient, thyroid crisis due to sudden release of massive hormonal release into the circulation causing what? What are the stigmata of thyroid crisis? Number one, hyperpyrexia. Temperature exceeding 40 degrees. Hyperpyrexia with excessive sweat, with severe tachycardia, more than 160. Severe tachycardia with hypotension, with dyspnea, with heart failure. Uh, also, marked palpitation. These are stigmata of thyroid crisis. Restlessness, restlessness, delirium, convulsions, they are all the stigmata of thyroid crisis and it is an emergency. 
thyroid crisis must be treated by massive doses of corticosteroids and massive doses of beta blockers and cardiac protectors and of course symptomatic treatment and it is sometimes it is fatal condition must be avoided rather than treated this is thyroid crisis the fourth complication which is immediate complication may be tetany and we can explain tetany by either direct removal of the parathyroid gland or injury of the parathyroid gland or vascular ischemia of parathyroid gland and tetany is manifest tetany or latent tetany of course manifest tetany by carpal spasm and pedal spasm carpopedal spasm or suffocation due to spasm of the respiratory muscles this is tetany and the treatment is urgent by calcium gluconate infusion immediate calcium gluconate intravenous slow infusion to correct and of course we will manage the tetany later on by many other medications the immediate complications also include either vascular injury and all types of hemorrhage pharyngeal injury and pharyngeal fistula or leak of the salivary content the tracheal injury injury to an important structure tracheal injury uh, uh, with air leak causing surgical emphysema of the neck nerve injury and we explained the nerve injury in the chapter of uh, or episode of anatomy maybe injury of lymphatics causing chylo seal of the neck or chylus fistula of the neck if you add a block dissection to the operation these are injury of an important structures all are immediate complications what about the late complications of course the main late complications are the wound complications maybe wound uh, sepsis maybe hypertrophic scar or keloid uh, scar maybe an ugly scar what we call adherent scar if you suture the platysma to the uh, skin or subcutaneous tissue this may cause adherent scar which is terrifying for the patient during swallowing usually it is called thyroid hood because it looks like the hood while the patient is swallowing of course myxedema can occur if the patient enters in a hypothyroidism not corrected by thyroxin or residual toxicity may occur or residual uh, uh, malignancy if you are doing thyroidectomy for malignancy and you forget excision of parts sometimes recurrence may occur or are delayed complications after thyroidectomy lastly hoping you 